I am Heidi Benjaminson, your host of Confidence Coaching, a podcast for mothers who want to stay calm and anchored during the teenage years. Life isn't a spectator sport. Success comes to those who show up every day with a pocket full of courage, grit, and a little sparkle. I'm glad you're here. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 168, How Gratitude Heals. I'm so glad you're here. This episode will release the week of Thanksgiving 2023. And in the spirit of Thanksgiving and gratitude, which I'm going to talk about today, thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening, giving me a few minutes of your day each week. Time is our most precious asset, and I really value yours. Okay, I have been studying a lot in formal and informal courses about our nervous system, the vagus nerve, emotional regulation, and rewiring our brain. And repeatedly, my teachers and other experts offer gratitude as one of the most healing emotions. Expressing and also receiving gratitude boosts our serotonin and activates the brainstem to produce dopamine, which is our brain's pleasure chemical. I believe it requires a lot of confidence and the ability to feel and sit with a vulnerability to express thanks to another person. And honestly, knowing how and exercising this gratitude muscle is not something I knew how to do until like really the last 10 to 15 years. I was not good at it. I'm not sure why. And for many years, I had a desire to tell people how much they genuinely meant to me or wanted to express gratitude and I didn't do it. I was just telling my sister recently that when I quit my consulting job, when I had my oldest son about 21 years ago, I really wanted to express heartfelt gratitude to my boss who had taken a huge risk hiring me and had taught me so much and how incredibly awkward and insecure I felt when leaving and how I acted like a weirdo. Those were my words. And I just wasn't sure why. As I know more about what my body was feeling at the time, I actually just didn't have the practice or know how to say what I wanted to say. And I didn't have the confidence to allow my boss to respond in whatever way she was going to. And I had no reason to think it would be bad. It requires confidence to express gratitude because many people, they don't know how to receive it. We're putting positive energy out into the world and the receiving person, they may deflect it which doesn't feel great to us. This puts us in a vulnerable position. Giving thanks is also a healthy expression of humility and dependence. And I don't think I knew how to express this. About 12 years ago, I met a woman who lived near me while we were in temporary housing as our home was being built. She was this beautiful, kind, friendly woman. Our kids played together and she expressed so vulnerably and easily how grateful she was that I had moved there and that we were friends. I was so touched and inspired by her genuine expression of gratitude. And I knew I wanted to get good at expressing and receiving such genuine and positive energy. Luckily, I have exercised and built this muscle over time. So why is it sometimes hard to express gratitude? It could be that we don't want to reveal any weakness, perceived weakness, or vulnerabilities to someone else. Gratitude is the opposite though. Expressing thanks reveals our strengths and willingness to be connected and dependent on others. Later in this episode, I have a few practices and simple scripts for you, real tools to apply today, because most of us, we just need the scripts and some practice. Now, going back for a moment to the science and how gratitude heals, if you needed some more reasons to be grateful, other than how good it will feel when we get past the vulnerability, know that feeling and expressing gratitude has scientifically been shown to reduce stress hormones in our body. Hormones such as cortisol, chronic stress keeps us in heightened states of arousal and increases wear and tear on our body. Gratitude reduces our stress response and promotes relaxation, reducing our heart rate and enhances our overall regulation and equilibrium. In other words, we're calmer, more anchored. We stay in control and in our lane, 
less swerving and less emotional accidents, emotional and physical, since we're healing our physical body. Sleep is one of the most healing things that we do. Well, deep healing sleep and gratitude practices have been linked to improving sleep, possibly by relaxing the nervous system. My husband has been writing and saying three things he's thankful for each night as he goes to bed, and he's noticed that he sleeps better and has a higher bandwidth for work stress the next day. I heard today on another podcast that the act of writing our gratitude or expressing the thanks moves the emotion and experience of it from our limbic, lower, unconscious part of our brain and stores it in the higher cortex and conscious brain. So we have easier access to the emotion and experience with the dopamine. I love now knowing what's actually happening in my body and brain. This all gives me additional reason to take a few minutes each day to express or practice gratitude. So how do we do it? It's one thing to know why, it's another to know how. Kind of like when I wanted to express gratitude and I wasn't doing it enough and so I wasn't comfortable enough. A part of it was that I just hadn't practiced it. So as I go through these examples, decide which one that you'll do tonight. Maybe you want to do a couple. You don't have to just choose one and then start practicing. Texting and emails make it so incredibly easy and simple to send a quick thank you. Always start in the writing or verbally with I am. Make all statements begin with I am grateful or I am thankful. Be specific. I really appreciate that you mow our lawn, a note that I do need to send my neighbor this week. While I've been writing this podcast, I stopped and emailed my son who is away and told him all the ways I'm grateful he's in our family. I was specific about his qualities and what he adds and who he is. Earlier, I sent a quick text to someone who spoke in church and the glowing things that my husband said about their talk. It took 30 seconds at most. Both of these are ways I want to use my lane and my influence to put good and positive energy into the world, in addition to healing and calming my brain and my lane. Authenticity matters, as well as our nonverbal cues and body language. If I'm not feeling grateful, I don't say anything. I want my energy to match my words. The nervous system of the receiving person will be able to tell if my words and energy are in alignment. This is where our energy can have influence and attract others. In episode 156, I talked about attracting and repelling emotions. Gratitude attracts people to us. We're naturally drawn to people who make us feel better about ourselves by just being around them. If we want our teens to want to be around us, then use gratitude as an attracting emotion. I've noticed that when things are going great for my kids, for our relationship, I can then sometimes not notice the good and not express the gratitude or even acknowledge it to myself. I'm working on changing this. Last month, my book group was reading a fictional book that had two teenage girl characters who were into a lot of trouble and were disrespectful and more. Reading the book made me very aware, oh my goodness, my daughter is much, much different. She has such a good head on her shoulders. She's very respectful. She isn't trouble for me and my husband, but I wasn't expressing daily gratitude for this because the absence of the negative made me less conscious and then less grateful. I'm changing this now in other ways. One way to do this is that we can just ask ourselves, what would life be like without this? I go through my five senses. What would life be like without this nice rug that my feet are on? What would life be like without my strong back? What would life be like without the chicken noodle soup that we just ate, without friends who give me their recipes? What would life be like without my laptop I'm touching or central heat or central air conditioning? Stopping to notice what we become accustomed to builds our gratitude, thus healing our nerves in small and meaningful ways. I was just flying on a plane and I thought how grateful I am to live in a world where we can travel safely and fast all over the world, even though my iPad was kind of slow. How incredible to watch a movie up in the air. 
We want to see our life through abundance, not scarcity. One way we do this is with our children, once a year at least, we make a list of things that we want and have. I want us going into this holiday season with an energy of abundance and gratitude, not an energy of lack and scarce and, oh, I want this. We can give and receive gifts from both places, so let's choose abundance. We list at least 25 things that we can remember wanting in the past and we now have. My list, though, can go on for pages. I make my brain see my great running shoes I want and have, the nice hair dryer I want and have, the patio furniture or white couches I have and want, the kitchen appliances that I remember wanting and I have. We go on and on. I do end up asking my kids what they do want for Christmas, but this practice helps us give and receive from a full heart, not from lacking or entitlement. I was recently looking through old pictures, looking for a specific one, And I could feel my life back in a time when I didn't have what I have now or what I felt like I needed. My heart was bursting and still is bursting with gratitude and abundance for my present life. It really is a choice to see what we have and be grateful for this, not focus on the lack. The more we express gratitude and watch what energy we put into the world, we may find different people are comfortable or uncomfortable around us. People who complain a lot only get better at complaining and become comfortable with negative energy. People who give thanks a lot get better at giving thanks and feel more comfortable with positive energy. As much as it would be great if we said thank you in a timely manner, I've actually expressed gratitude to people months and years after they made an impact or after a specific event. It's possible that I didn't see the full effect or feel the real genuine gratitude at the time. I've gotten good at feeling the emotion inside me in a moment and then not awkwardly saying, hey, I know this happened a while ago. I want to say thank you to you for how you handled that situation. Or I want to tell you it meant a lot to me that you did this. Or I want to express belated thanks for so-and-so. Gratitude has no expiration date. It will mean a lot to both of us, the giver and to the receiver, to know that they're appreciated. As I've started to express thanks, even with what may seem like wildly belated thanks, I've had several situations where the receiver had no idea they had made such an impact on me or my family. I think we live in a world where we lack real awareness of the positive impact we're having on others. I've been known to tell people, hey, you might not remember you said this one thing to me years ago. It has stuck with me and changed me. Just tell people. You can make it weird. Just do it. Living a life in a lane of gratitude changes who will be traveling with us. I've seen this shift in conversations when someone complains and finds the negative in a person or situation. And then when one person shifts the conversation to see the good. Others may not necessarily change their energy, but the complaining stops for the moment. Our gratitude has more influence and effect on others than we realize. So we're healing our own nervous system, regulating our emotions, creating calm, and positively affecting others. How amazing is that? Before I end, a few tips for receiving gratitude and appreciation and thanks from others. This is an art. This is a skill. Unless you really are aware of what you say and how you receive, you might be deflecting the positive energy, which makes the giver feel bad. If you're uncomfortable with your contributions and think that they aren't enough or have lower self-esteem, we're not going to feel in alignment when we get appreciation. The good news is we can change this with practice. When someone says thank you, be open and receive it. Keep it simple. Say you're welcome. Or say, I'm so glad I could help. Accept the positive. This heals you. Do not deflect or minimize the gratitude. This subconsciously feels bad to the other person. Again, it's like we're putting up a shield and we shoot the energy right back at them. This is such a great skill to model to our kids so they see that we might feel uncomfortable with the praise and we can still accept it. 
Be humble. If the gratitude needs to be shared with other people, it's okay to acknowledge what went into the end result, but still be sure to accept the positive energy. Again, we're trying to keep that energy moving. I have a friend who I've noticed is so good at accepting compliments. I've had reason to be very grateful to her and I express it. And each time she gracefully accepts it by saying, oh, I'm so glad that makes me feel so good. She could minimize her contribution, but she doesn't. She's not prideful or arrogant. She accepts my appreciation with humility and grace, and it's made a big impression on me. She makes me feel good for having recognized and expressed my thanks. So I want to do it more, which in turn helps me see the good more in the world around me. I've given several examples here. What we do is less important than us actually having some gratitude practice. Make it quick and simple and genuine. That's it for this week. If you would like to go through my stay in your lane signature program and learn to stay emotionally regulated and confident, sign up for a consult call at HeidiBenjaminson.com. A confident mother is the greatest gift to her family, not a perfect mother. Our families want us to feel confident, anchored, and calm. I can help you uncover this version of yourself. Have a great week.